We did a video not too long ago about chicken dermatitis. Today, I'm going to talk to you turkey growers, turkey dermatitis. Talking about turkey dermatitis today. Now, if you were to go back and look at that video we did about chicken dermatitis, there's gonna be some similarities, but there are some things that are different. So there are some things we wanna talk about today. The fact is both of them are caused by clostridium. So what are some causes to this thing right here too? So bacteria, viruses, um, parasites, and toxins that get in the gut and affect the gut barrier. Um, I know a lot of times I refer to it a lot like leaky gut, which we talk about for humans and general health and things like that. And that's kind of what it is because those challenges will affect the gut barrier and then allow clostridium to get into the bloodstream. Now, clostridium is in there, clostridium is everywhere, but it's the overgrowth of clostridium. So that's how dermatitis starts. So what does it look like for turkey? Um, I spent a little time with a supervisor for one of the turkey integrators that I won't mention. But anyway, got to spend a little time with him and talked about some things that I know what the research shows and the professors and all this, but the fact is boots on the ground, what does it look like? So here are some things to look for. So uh, one of the common things is if you see one leg under them and one leg behind them, you want to you can start to know that, hey, we may have a problem. Reach down, turn them over, and you're gonna see blisters because what that does is that clostridium gets in there, heats them up, and it starts creating blisters on the skin. So when you see that, you see them, um, you, got, you got blisters, you got leg deformity and stretched out, things like that. Here's some other things, uh, and this kind of affects chicken also. It's very localized mortality. You see one dead bird, you get rid of it. The next day, there's three. The next day, there's 15. It just starts getting exponential. And you know, sometimes it can just happen at the end of the barn or maybe in the middle, but it is a localized mortality as well. And those are some signs. The problem is, is that once you start seeing signs and they're visible, it's too late. You got it. It's there. Okay, now it may be too late to keep it from coming, but there are still some things you can do right now to minimize what's about to happen. So, one of the first things you need to do is, unfortunately, you need to cull because this thing can grow and get out of hand. So, cull pretty aggressively because what's gonna happen is if you allow that to hang out, then now it's gonna spread to the others. Um, you may need to actually increase walking and picking up the dead to maybe two or three times a day. I heard, I read something uh, by a university that suggested you may have to pick up every three to four hours. Um, so there are some things that you're gonna do. It's gonna be labor intensive, but cull, um, pick up more often. Here's another thing. When you get those dead birds up, you need to be careful about ever setting them back down anywhere in the house. Um, so get them up. I don't know for you turkey growers, one of the things we talked about in the video is the mere size of the bird is different from growing chickens as it is turkey. So if you're picking up a lot of dead big old turkeys, you may need to actually take a cart in there. Forget the five gallon bucket, get a cart because you don't want to put that bird down piled anywhere. You just gotta get it till you can get it to the incinerator or the composting and deal with it. So I suggest, and I've got some people who do this with our litter life, which is a probiotic, is to actually have a you know, one gallon pump up sprayer, put about a pint mixed with a, the rest of the gallon sprayer with water and just spray that spot. Now you can disinfect that or you can put litter life on there, some kind of probiotic to help actually deal with because that bacteria is not just gonna sit there, it's gonna go down. So a disinfectant is gonna affect the top layer, but a good, bac good bacteria probiotic is gonna go down and in there where it's starting to infest. So those are the things, the last thing to do, and we preach this all the time, is biosecurity. But what you're gonna to have to do in this situation is increase your biosecurity. I mean, if you're diligent, 
you're going to have to become more diligent. Be careful. You know, your protection of your shoes, who's coming in, moving house to house. Maybe moving from the front to the back. Maybe just walk the front and then walk, change shoes, coveralls, whatever, and walk, walk the back too. So you're going to have to increase your biosecurity. But those are some things of how you react when you got the problem. Now, all that sounds uh, pretty depressing if you really can't do anything but react. If you see it, you got it. So let's talk about prevention a little bit. And we always talk about this, or at least, I mean, I always talk about this on this video. Control what you can control. There's a lot of things that happen. Uh, you don't get to pick what kind of feed you get mixed. You don't get to pick what birds you get. So there are some things you can control though. So as far as trying to prevent dermatitis, just a couple of basic things. We talk about this all the time, biosecurity. So stay diligent, stay on top of these things. Um, one day I'm gonna do a video on the normalization of deviance. What in the world does that mean? But just because you have gotten by previously without doing some things and not been affected, doesn't mean that one day it's not gonna bite you on the butt. So when you normalize deviating and you think you've been successful, all that to just say this, stay diligent, stay on top of it. Even maybe if you've been slack in the past and gotten by with it, doesn't mean that that's gonna always be the way it is. So stay on top of it, biosecurity. Um, the other thing is look back at what the causes are. Bacteria, viruses, toxins, uh, parasites, Get a good probiotic in there. Disinfect your lines, clean your houses. You know, that's part of the biosecurity, but also get good bacteria in the gut. Get good bacteria so that clostridium doesn't take over in the gut lining. And then the last one is this, and this is one I think we, we overlook sometimes, is that the impact of stress, and we did a video not too long ago about the stress of bird and how it actually affects the gut of the bird. And without going back and revisiting that video, but when you stress a bird, the lining of that gut, that gut barrier that we talked about earlier, allows that opening. That's how we leak bacteria, that leaky gut. But stress is what can also do that. So try to minimize the stress. Biosecurity, use a good probiotic, um, and then try to reduce the stress. But dermatitis is very abundant right now. I hear about it a lot. But um, do as much as you can to prevent it. And then those are some things you can do to react. Um, hope that helps maybe to give some, some ideas, some thoughts on how to deal with this. But uh, if there's anything we can do to help you, or if you have a good idea on some videos you'd like us to do some research and present, give me a holler. Alan at southlandorganics.com or 1-800-608-3755. Until next time.